Howdy folks, my name is Terry, and today we're talking about magnets. It's March magnets. Anyways, um, I wanted to talk about magnets uh, today, whether that is, you know, something that you're familiar with or something you're totally new to because you're new to the hobby. Uh, magnets are a really useful thing, and I think you're probably going to get something out of this video, uh, whether you're new or not. I wanted to do this with the Legion stuff because I had all these fresh miniatures I could use for this stuff, and I can actually demonstrate techniques for you. So that's, that's kind of what I'm... I'm I'm showing off today. One of the first questions that was asked on Facebook's uh, Star Wars Legion group uh, that I was able to answer pretty pretty easily was, um, can you stick magnets in the bases? And the answer is yes. Um, this is a magnet that is, I believe, one tenth of an inch thick, um, and it's flush. It's a uh, yeah, it sits about flush just because there's a bevel in the edge at the bottom, and that makes it so that the magnet it doesn't seem like it's directly touching. It's pretty darn close to touching uh, whatever metal surface it's on. Um, and if that metal surface is magnetic, it'll hold and you can transport it that way. So that means that if you have uh, one of those fancy cases that has metal sheets in it, like I do, um, you can actually transport uh, these miniatures in that. And the benefit is that if you're using magnets and a metal case to transport your miniatures in, you can de generally put them in a more dense kind of configuration in there. If you've got multiple layers, you can put more miniatures in a case of a comparable size just because you don't need all that foam to protect the miniatures. What's actually protecting the miniatures is the fact that there's nothing rattling around in that box. Nothing's loose. Put a magnet in there, throw it in a, a toolbox, a metal lunchbox. If you've got a Star Wars metal lunchbox, that would be a pretty epic way to transport these guys. So uh, that's something you can do with them. On the note of transporting them, uh, the uh, airspeeder actually has this thing. It's one of these clear bases. Now, if you glue this down to this base here, um, your, I won't say it's guaranteed it's going to break, but the likelihood that this, this clear resin base stand, the stand is going to break is extremely high. And I've broken enough of these suckers in my time to try to want to do other things with them and, and not break them because ultimately it's just such a pain. And then you ruin the look by trying to glue it together and it's never as strong and it's, it's just a super awful hassle. So, um, what I've done with my airspeeder, which I haven't painted yet, which is why you haven't seen the twirl on it, um, is I've put a magnet in this base here and I've put a same size magnet on the bottom here. Now, when you do that, my suggestion is to actually stick the magnet onto the bottom of the space, put the magnet on top and make sure the polarity is right and just glue the base on top. Now, what that does is it gives you a nice solid foundation so much so that like if I turn it around, this will hold. Um, it's a little wobbly, like it's a little wobbly right now because uh, I didn't green stuff around here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put some some green stuff around the base uh, just to f make it flush with the magnet, just so it has a more stable base, but um, so it won't wobble around because it'll be be uh, stable. But ultimately, I have a transportable flying stand that is less likely to to break in half because I'm. I'm moving it around because it's attached to something, either on the top or on the bottom. And then all you have to do at that point is uh, is do up the base to match this base with some texture and some paint, and you're laughing. So that's uh, that's how I've also used magnets in terms of transporting these kind of bigger vehicle style things. Transportation is a very common way to use magnets, but most miniature wargamers have gotten into magnets for one reason only, and that is for weapon options. And weapon options are one of those things where, especially with vehicles, um, oftentimes the kit will come with multiple options. Uh, and when you're playing games, those options have different points costs. And so having magnets uh, allows you to change those weapon options up and not have to buy, say, three of the same kit, just to have three different weapon options just because there's the three options in the single kit box. Now what I have here is the ATRT, and it actually has a magnet inside the chassis and pins inside the uh, weapon options. And what that means is I can stick them, I can stick them reliably, I can even move them around, woo! And they can they can kind of swivel and, and move around that way. And uh, you kind of want to do this before you paint them, generally, um, because that layer of paint might, uh, might be problematic when gluing the magnet in. I've, I've seen magnets pull away from layers of paint. Um, but ultimately, it just gives you a lot of options to change it up. Now, the way I was able to do this is simply I bought a pin kit. Uh, Army Painter makes these, these pin kits that have multiple sizes of pins, as well as 
appropriately sized drill bits for those pins. Now those pins are magnetic and what I do is I'll bend one of those pins, um, I'll stick a, a magnet of appropriate size on the end of it. Uh, this one is a hobby magnet because it's very very small and I just stick it up into the bottom of the chassis using that pin. Now you dry fit first obviously you want to dry fit first and then you just glue that pin up when you're pretty satisfied that you can you can place it where you want um, after that while the glue is setting on on the magnet you can then drill into the weapon options using that same size pin um, and the accompanying drill bit to go into the, the option um, and then cut it flush you want to go at least uh, the same the same width of the pin um, into into the option depending on how much plastic you have to play with. Thank you so much to my Patreon backers for supporting me and making videos like this possible. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do that. So uh, a super shout out to them. If you want to help out too, you can go to my Patreon page and support me there. Also, you'll probably notice a few things in the background here. Those tutorials are coming up um, very, very soon, actually. My goal for the month of uh, April is to actually do a video every day so it's Vita a uh, video every day April and uh, and so if you want to see more tutorials coming up very soon because uh, April is like next week um, you'll start seeing more videos coming up that way but you can also make sure you hit the subscribe button to you know be notified via YouTube uh, if you hit the bell icon down below as well it will notify you as soon as a video goes live and you can follow me on social media as well because I'll post all sorts of stuff letting you know I've got new content out so thank you so much for watching let me know in the comments below what tutorial you want to see next from me um, and and what little hints uh, you've got for your Star Wars Legion set and uh, I just wanted to mention all, obviously all the the techniques I've shown here are not specific to Legion I just had all of these wonderful fresh models I wanted to use so thank you so much for watching and until next time I will see you soon